Elements didn't feel so much like my team, honestly. It was more like we had like a lot of problems. We didn't work out that well together in the end. We came to a point where it just couldn't go farther anymore. So we had to do a drastic move. I think we mainly just looked for players that could actually get along and still like playing the game and actually want to win. So for the new players we were looking for fresh players or like for veterans. In the end we decided to take like another veteran like Dexter. In Lemon Dogs he was probably my best friend on the team and I really enjoy playing with him uh, both in and outside of the game. He's a good friend of mine. I already played with Tubbs, I know how he is, I know how to approach him, like from his personality. I have been playing against Froggen for like two or three years almost, so I kind of know his personality too. For Chaba right now it's his time to shine, like he has a good team around him. I always wanted to be in this team for since long, but it never happened, but now it did, so it was good. Like we looked at players and stuff, and Tubbs has obviously always been close to us. I don't really have any hard feelings, you know, I think what they did to the team, they thought would work out for the best for them, so I can't hold it against them. I've changed my mindset to the game and how I view it within my life, and I'm going hard or go home, basically. And then for the support role, we decided to take a new talent. I basically started playing League in Season 3. Uh, I didn't play any competitive at all uh, so far. I went to my first tournament ever, like, four weeks ago or something. Even though he's new to the scene and, like, everything, I'm, I'm, I'm confident enough to teach him the new, how to play, like, in a team. I'm pretty excited to play with, like, new people. We have a complete new roster, basically, around Froggen again. It's, like, Super Team version 3, basically. I mean, I learned a lot over the last two, three months. Maybe not so much in-game, but a lot outside of the game, so I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, I play a video game, right? So it's like, kind of need to have some fun doing that. Yeah, it's actually one of the happiest teams I've ever played in. I mean, as long as you have fun, it's pretty easy to stay motivated. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the European LCS. Before we get into our next matchup, let's hear from you guys over in the Twitterverse because earlier we asked, who is your player to watch and why? And uh, you had a lot to say as usual. Our first tweet is from at WizKid. I'm looking forward to seeing Dexter. I really want to know where he is right now in Europe. And that's a question on a lot of people's minds. I mean, he's in Berlin right now. He is. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry, that was terrible. I channeled like freak for a second there. But uh, let, let's bring it back to that. Dexter's a player we haven't actually seen in Europe in a while. Obviously, he spent time over with CLG. Mixed results over there. Um, it, it's been a split now, at least, without really seeing Dexter as a player here. We know he's a, a veteran player with a lot of experience. He's been on so many teams that have been competing at the highest level. So. He's, can he bring that experience to a team like Elements? Time will tell. I think he is one of the players to watch, certainly. All right, and definitely exciting to see him back here again. Our second tweet is from at 10 Ketsu. Gambit forgiven. I want to see that salt and pepper bot lane. No comment. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to channel Freak again because, uh, you know, now we've got Edward or Gosu Pepper now with forgiven. It's a well-seasoned bot <laughs> lane. It's, uh, but uh, honestly, those two players... Again, they've been around for a very long time. I, I feel like one of the big storylines we have here in Europe is the return of a lot of veteran players. Just all across the board, we've seen all of the new talent, the 23 new rookies we saw in Spring Split. Now we're seeing the old guard trying to take back their crown. And let's see if they ha will have more luck than uh, they did in North America, because not a lot of the old guard are still around over there. That's true. And a sign of that as well is Edward back to go to Pepper. Yeah. Diamond back to Diamond. Prox trying to channel that old M5 uh, spirit, maybe. Our last tweet is from at Curse Skyblade. The player I'm looking forward to watching is Scumbag Crepo. I've always enjoyed his casting, and I look forward to more. Well, he's been casting for a while now. I'd say it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I'd say pretty good. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I, <laughs> what I is was that? Gonna be what mean. is that? I was gonna, I was gonna maybe like make a, a joke about like you know still room to improve, but I, no, honestly, I can't. No, it, definitely. It's been a pleasure working with Mitch this week. And Absolutely it. has. Looking forward to doing a lot more of that. And thank you guys for sending in those tweets. Be sure to stay in the conversation as the day continues. Use that hashtag LCS. You know the drill, of course. But now let's dial in on our next game, where Gambit are about to take to the rift with a Spring Split MVP against an overhauled Elements roster. We are going to start by taking a look at uh, the lineup for Gambit. What in the top lane? Cabo Shard, then Diamond Prox, 
Betsy, Forgiven, Gosu Pepper, and their coach, Moo. Very interesting to see there the change back to Gosu Pepper and now uh, Forgiven in that bottom lane. There's a lot of talked about when it comes to that. And there's a lot of good things to say about Forgiven, obviously. But when it comes to Gambit um, and mid game presence, Pinoy actually had a high level of mid game involvement in that team. The fourth highest kill participation of ADCs between 15 and 30 minutes. And in that same time window, Forgiven has actually has the second lowest kill participation in that window. Will that have any implications for the way Gambit plays in the mid game and maybe having to bank more on closing it out later? That's one of the biggest points here about this, uh, you know, revamped Gambit lineup with Forgiven now. That's not the only real change that the Forgiven uh, addition to the team is going to have. You look at the stats when it comes to the CS share between the team. Previously, Spring Split, Gambit, because of Pinoy's involvement, meant that so much of the farm went over to Cabochard. He was the number one top laner for CS share for the team. Compare that with Forgiven on SK, it was Forgiven that was absorbing most of the CS. This is something that Crepo, I'm expecting a lot to hear from him in the coming game, but uh, that's a dynamic that we really have to watch out for and see how it changes the Gambit lineup. Yeah, absolutely, and just see how that bottom lane plays together as well. Betsy, in the, the tease at the beginning of the show, said, well, we have a good bot lane now. That is something we have always wanted. Very, very strong words there. Uh, how do you think it's going to work out, that cooperation between Edward, who is now yet again on another AD carry after, uh, well, Genja, his old mate, has not been around for a while. How do you think that, in terms of personality and playstyle, would mesh out? I find that a really interesting statement from Betsy, because Betsy hasn't been around the Gambit lineup <laughs> particularly long himself. And Pinoy, when he joined, they went to IEM in Cologne and and won that. So, I mean, Betsy is right to assess that maybe the Gambit bot lane as a duo hasn't been the strongest for quite some time. This may very well be that reinvigoration that the Gambit lineup needs in the bot lane. And we'll see how that turns out. They're up against Elements in this one on the red side. The brand new roster except for Frog. And so let's take a look at it. JWoww, Dexter, Frog and Tabs, Promise Q, and their coach now, uh, Nif. So, it is Frog in there, and we heard it in the video. Uh, was it Dexter who said it? Uh, the Super Team version 3 already. But it's cool that they say it, because that is kind of, OK, is this then the Super Team again? Is that still the same story you want to go with? And to us, it's a, a big story of veterans or people who are looking for another in, maybe a last chance to make things happen. Yeah, it certainly is, again, that story of a team full of veterans. I would even class JWoww as somebody who is a veteran of the scene. I remember casting him on TCM all the way back in Season 3. He is a player that has been around a long time, but never really had the platform with a team around him uh, to play. But saying that, they're a team of players with experience. We know they have had what it takes to get to the top when it comes to a lot of the players. Do they have uh, what it takes to get to the top now? Because you can see just exactly how many games they have between them. 12 combined splits. and. A crazy, crazy number of games. Yeah, and the world's appearances, uh, Dexter was in one of those, of course, Tabs and, and Lemon Dog, so that is at least um, some communication that will still be there. Talking about JWoww as well, so kind of do or die for him. He has the right team around them, I said. Tabs also said the same thing. It is go hard or go home. Very uh, interesting from him to hear that he has a totally different vision on the way, I'm going to quote him, the way the game fits in the rest of his life now, because that's one of the main things we heard echoed when uh, he left the Alliance roster, of course, as well. Um, how do we think he's going to do. That's, uh, and it's so weird, because this lineup is one that is so untested. It's so difficult. Like, Origin Fnatic, we, we've had some consistency between that. The only thing really consistent about this lineup is Froggen. And again, Tabs spent a split not playing. How does that affect a player? It, every single player is different when it comes to taking time off. Some will just naturally pick it back up. Mm -hmm. Tabs, again, we saw his performances on Alliance. Uh, it, people were back and forth, spring split, summer split. There was a, a difference in people's uh, impression of how Tabs played. If Tabs comes back as good as he was on Alliance when they were winning, then Elements are still a very dangerous team. No, definitely. With that uh, Promise Q, the brand new support by his yeah. side. So we will see how that turns out. It's time to see these refreshed squads on the Rift. So let's head to the caster desk for picks and bands. Thank you very much, Shocks and Stress. And I just want to reiterate something that Shocks said. Uh, an Elements team member saying it's do or die. Why does that feel so familiar to me? Yeah, well, the last guy that said that is sitting right here. So hopefully it bodes better for them than for me. But uh, yeah, I think we're about to head in champ select soon. And people, uh, person I want to watch, you know, I want to watch Dexter. But I yep. also want to watch Promiscuous or Promiscue as uh, he calls himself because 
back in the day, he was called Hamp the Tank. <laughs> I just want to throw it out there. I love that name. That is an awesome nickname. I'm sad he changed it. I'm, I personally want to see how Forgiven performs. Yep. You know, on a team like Gambit, Pinoy was a little bit of a wild card in terms of his decision-making and his position.